Okay, this will be the second video of Chapter 4 AP Questions Review. We'll do number 6 and number 7. Now, these are actually from the most previous tests. And a lot of times the AP examiners like to put together pictures and diagrams and see if you understand the concepts visually. So here we have a student mixes a dilute silver nitrate with excess sodium chloride to form silver chloride. And actually they give you the net ionic equation for the precipitation. Which of the diagrams below best represents the ions that are present in significant concentrations in the solution? So what we see is we see that each one of these have some silver chloride at the bottom of the beaker, which makes sense because silver chloride is the precipitate formed. It will all come down to the type of ions present in the solution. Now because the other two ions, nitrate and sodium, did not participate in the reaction, recall these are called spectator ions. Tator ions. So these spectator ions will remain in solution. In fact, that's what we see in every solution, nitrate and sodium, every, uh, well, in many of these solutions. So first of all, all the silver chloride should be gone, which means we should not see any silver or any chloride in the solution. So this guy is definitely out. We also see that we have some silver left here and some chloride, which should not happen because silver chloride is not soluble. It should all be at the bottom of the beaker. So this solution is out. It all comes down to C and A. Now, in C and A, if you take a look, we have sodium nitrate and sodium nitrate in both beakers, which is correct. But in C, what we see is we see some chloride also present. Now, this is actually correct because we have an excess amount of sodium chloride that we put in. Because of this word excess, we're saying that we have uh, more chloride in there than, uh, than we should. So not all the chloride precipitates. That's just because there's not enough silver to precipitate, uh, precipitate at all. So this is actually the correct answer um, because of this word excess in there. So very often, uh, when you mix the two together, you put an excess of one of the substance. And the reason for this is because you want to sh make sure that something completely reacts. In this case, that something is silver. This would be a case in which all the silver must react, so you add too much chloride to ensure that that happens. So hopefully this one makes sense. Let's try the last one here. Uh, the last one is a bit uh, involved as well, so it may take a little extra hard thinking to get this one in. We have beaker X and Y, each containing one liter of solution, as shown on the left and the student combines the solutions by pouring them together into a large uh, empty beaker Z, which is here, and observes the formation of a white precipitate. In this case, our white precipitate is that same silver chloride we just, seen, we just have seen. So the reaction is actually the same. Uh, the net ionic equation is the same. Our second substance is now magnesium chloride with Cl2, which will be different from the sodium chloride we had above. Assuming that the volumes are additive, which of the following solutions could be represented by the diagram. Now what we see in the diagram is on the left we see the silver plus, these little pluses are your silver, and we see these big minuses, that's your nitrate. And in the second beaker we have the double plus, I know it's a little tough to see, that represents the magnesium because it has a two plus charge, and we have the minus one that represents the chloride having a minus one charge. Now all of the silver the plus ones and the chloride, the minus ones, disappear. In fact, in the third beaker, you don't see any more silver or any more chloride. So this is like a perfect combination of the two. You do see the spectator ions again. You see the nitrates and you see the magnesium two plus. So that's the picture. Th the first possibility they're saying is that we began with two molar of silver nitrate and two molar of uh, magnesium chloride to form four molar of the nitrate uh, resulting. Now this is not correct. This can't happen because if you take a look, every magnesium chloride will produce twice as many chlorides as the solution. In other words, for a 2 molar, you'll actually get 4.0 moles of chloride, Cl minus. This is kind of back to the beginning. We discussed the question that 
that showed us this. From two molar uh, silver nitrate, you would still get two mole, two moles of silver, 2.0 moles of silver. In other words, what we're saying is that if this was the case, we would have too much Cl minus, and we would show in the third beaker, we would show some Cl minus, but we do not. Therefore, it cannot be a two to two ratio. In fact, both of these, for that reason, are out. Um, pause the video and think about that a little more to see if you can wrap your head around this concept. It has to be a two to one relationship, as is the case with C and D. So it's going to be one of these two. The question is which one? Again, the reason it's going to be one of these two is because we have two molar versus one molar, which makes sense. This two molar gives us two moles of Ag+. Plus. This one molar gives us, again, the one doubles because of the chloride. We get two moles of chloride minus. And this makes sense. And that's how all of it disappears and becomes the precipitate down here. The question really is, which one of these is correct? Do we have one molar nitrate solution at the end or 0.5 molar magnesium nitrate at the end? Well, using the same logic, from this solution, we actually get two moles of nitrate because we have two molar solution and you get one nitrate for every solution. And for the magnesium chloride, we actually here, we get one mole of magnesium. And so these would combine together perfectly into magnesium nitrate, which is the solution here that's, left, that's uh, in the final beaker. And you get yourself the 1.0 moles of magnesium nitrate, MgNO32. In other words, the ratio worked perfect. It's two for the nitrate, one for the magnesium. So we have one mole of magnesium nitrate. However, what we've got is we have uh, a dilution happening. In other words, when we pour the two mixtures together, because we have one liter of each solution, at the end of it, we end up with two liters. So this whole beaker is a two liter beaker. So we have to end up dividing, let's do this final one in the green color so you can see it better, 1.0 molar by two liters, which gives us 0.5 molar solution. So the final answer indeed is D, because it is the one that gives us the 0.5 molar solution. I know this is a bit messy. Uh, again, think through it. See if you can wrap your head around it. And this is definitely one of the toughest questions that uh, they would ask. And so be ready for questions like this on the, on the test.